Hi guys, welcome to Music Theory Grade 1, Part 4. Accidentals, Key Signatures, Scales, and Tone Degrees. Accidentals. Okay. As we discussed earlier, the musical alphabet has seven different notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. But in music, we actually have 12 different pitches. These other pitches are all related to the musical alphabet, but they come in the form of accidentals. The accidentals we use are sharps, flats, a sharp raises the pitch by a semitone, whilst a flat lowers the pitch by a semitone. So you can see here we'll have C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B and C. You can really sharpen any of the notes. And the same with the flats. B flats, A flats, G flats, Accidentals are written before the note on the staff. Although when we talk or write about notes with accidentals, we say the accidental after the note name. It's almost a bit like how we would write R50, but we would say 50 Rand. So when we write the note name away from the staff, we would write it like we said, with the C first and then the sharp. But on the staff, the sharp would always come first. And remember, an accidental lasts an entire bar. So if there is a, a sharp or a flat before, before, let's say, an F in the bar, then every F in that bar will have a sharp attached to it, even if it's not written. But as soon as there's a bar line, the accidental falls away and the note will be a natural again. Okay, with all these sharps that I mentioned, and the flats, it looks like we would have many more than 12 pitches. But if you look at this keyboard, you'll see that sometimes a sharpened note is actually the same pitch as the above flattened, the above flattened note. For example, a C sharp, this one here, is actually the same pitch as a D flat. So we have two ways of writing all of these notes so that they can fit into different key signatures. So here, an F sharp is the same as a G flat. A G sharp is the same as an A flat. An A sharp is the same as a B flat. So really, we have 12 pitches. Okay. Remember we learned about time signatures and how they tell the musician how the beats are organized. Well, we also have what we call key signatures to tell the musicians what pitches they need to play. The key signatures found at the beginning of each staff after the clef and after the time signature. We have sharp key signatures, which instruct the musician to add sharps to the notes they're going to play. And we have flat key signatures, which instruct the musician to add flats to the notes they're going to play. In grade one, we need to know six different key signatures, namely C major, G major, D major, F major, B flat major, and A minor. You might have noticed how I put a lowercase a for A minor. And often musicians will use majors, they'll use the capital letter, but for minors, they'll use lowercase. Okay, the easiest key signature to learn is that of C major, because C major has no sharps or flats. So really, the key signature for C major is really just the absence of a key signature. In grade one, we also need to know A minor's key signature, which is exactly the same as C major's key signature. So in C major, no sharps or flats, and in A minor, no sharps or flats. Sharp key signatures. Okay, G major has one sharp. The sharp sits on the F line here indicating to the musician that any F in the music needs to be played as an F sharp. D major has two sharps. The sharps sit on the F line and the C line, indicating to the musician that any Fs and Cs in the music need to be played as F sharp and C sharp. Okay, so again, G major has one sharp, F sharp. D major has two sharp, F sharp and C sharp. 
Okay. It is very important to learn the placings of the sharps or flats and the key signatures, as they must always be placed correctly. So in G major, the sharp is always on this top line. And in D major, the sharps are always on the top line and the C space. The placings are according to what clef we're in. So you're really going to need to, to learn the placings for the bass clef and the treble clef. Okay, flat key signatures. F major has one flat. And this flat sits on the B line, indicating to the musicians that any B in the music needs to be played as a B flat. So F major has one flat, B flat. B flat major has two flats. The flats sit on the B line and the E, e space, really, indicating to the musician that any Bs and Es in the music need to be played as B flat and E flat. So B flat major therefore has two flats, B flat and E flat. Okay, key signatures. Remember, C major or A minor has no sharps or flats. G major has one sharp, F sharp. D major has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. F major has one flat, B flat. B flat major has two flats, B flat and E flat. And remember, it is so important for you to know exactly where to place the sharps and flats on the staff. Okay, if you place them in the wrong place, you're going to get penalized. So really just learn these. One more time. C major and A minor, no sharps or flats. G major, one sharp, F sharp. D major, two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. F major, one flat, B flat. B flat major has two flats, B flat and E flat. Okay, and remember I said we're also going to need to learn the key signature placing in the bass clef. So learn which line or space to place the accidental. And remember, of course, C major and A minor have no sharps or flats. But in the bass clef, you can see where the, the sharp is placed on the F line in the bass clef. And again, the D major, the sharp is placed on the F line and the C space. For F major, the B flat is placed on the B line. And the, for B flat major, the flats are placed on the B line and the E line. Okay, scales. Scales are like the building blocks of music. They're so important, not just for musicians to practice on their instruments, but also for theory and writing music. There are different types of scales. In grade one, we will learn about major scales and minor scales. Scales are in different keys, and so each scale has its own key signature. Scales can be written with a key signature or with accidentals instead of the key signature. C major scale has no sharps or flats. Remember, C major key signature has no sharps or flats, and therefore C major scale has no sharps or flats. The scale above is one octave, which really just means eight notes. Scales always start and end on the note they are named for. So C major scale will always start on C and end on C. You can see that this scale is an ascending scale, meaning it goes from a low tone to a high tone. A, de a descending scale would start at the higher C and go down to the lower C. Okay, here I have G major scale written two different ways. The top G major scale is written without a key signature. And the bottom G major scale is written with a key signature. We can see that the top G major scale, has, they put an accidental just before the F, meaning that it has an F sharp. Now in the bottom one, we don't need to put that accidental because of the key signature. Yes, the key signature tells us that that F is sharpened. So these two scales, although written differently, will sound exactly the same. Notice how having a key signature means the music does not need accidentals. So really, the reason we have key signatures 
is because it would be a lot of extra work for composers to have to write in every accidental. Instead, he writes a key signature, which tells the musician to play the accidentals without the composer having to fill each one in. Now just imagine the composer was writing a piece in D major. That means every time he had to write an F or a C, he would have to put a sharp in front of it. That could get, be a lot of extra work. So instead, he just puts a key signature and the musician knows to sharpen all the C's and the D's. But key signatures also make music simpler to read for the musician. So you will be expected to be able to name written scales with or without their key signature. So remember to look out for accidentals. You will also be expected to write scales with and without a key signature. So make sure that you're comfortable writing the key signature and also writing accidentals before the notes that need. Here again, D major scale. The top example written without a key signature and the bottom example written with a key signature. Once again, these two scales would sound exactly the same, they're just written differently. F major scale. Again, the top example has a key signature and the bottom example doesn't have a key signature and so the flat has been filled in. B flat major scale, the top example with the key signature, and the bottom example without the key signature, so the flats have been filled in. Okay, A minor scale. A minor scale has the same key signature as C major. Really, no key signature, as it has no sharps or flats. But, minor scales will always have accidentals even when they do not have a key signature because the seventh note of every minor scale needs to be raised. An A minor scale looks the same as C major scale except it starts on A instead of C and the seventh note, which would be the G, is sharpened. So you can see the scale goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A. Okay, and this is an example of an ascending and descending scale. Okay, remember, you need to be able to write and recognize scales with and without their key signatures. When there is no key signature, look out for the starting note and accidentals. Learn key signatures properly so you'll be able to write and recognize different keys. You'll be expected to write scales using semi-breves, which are whole notes. You must be able to write and recognize scales in both the treble and bass clef. Please go home and practice writing scales in both clefs. Remember the placing of the key signature accidentals is different in the bass clef. You might be asked to write an ascending scale, the scale going up, or a descending scale, scale going down. Remember, scales always begin and end on the note they are named for. So C major scale will always begin and end on C. D major scale will always begin and end on D. In minor scales, we will always have accidentals, even if there is a key signature, as the seventh note of the scale needs to be sharpened. Please learn where each flat or sharp is placed in the key signature as this will win or lose you marks. Okay, tone degrees. We have technical names for each note, which we also call tone degrees in the scale. In grade one, you're expected to know three of these technical names, the tonic, subdominant, and dominant. The first note of every scale is known as the tonic. The fourth note of a scale is known as the subdominant and the fifth note is known as the dominant. Okay, once again, the first note is the tonic. The fourth note, the subdominant. The fifth note is the dominant. That was in C major. Exactly the same in any scale. 
whether it's F major, G major, D major, the first note is the tonic, the fourth note is the subdominant, and the fifth note is the dominant.